In this video, I am going to show you how to perform multiple linear regression uh, in Excel. So to demonstrate how to perform multiple linear regression, I'll take a data set. So, so the data set looks like this. We have got data for uh, you know 20, 20 employees uh, and then we have data for their salary, uh, for uh, their experience, uh, education and gender. So the idea is uh, we need to build a regression model which will predict somebody's salary given his uh, experience, education, and, and gender. Okay, so salary is the uh, explain uh, the dependent variable or the variable of interest, um, and then we want to relate salary with three other independent variable or explanatory variable known as experience, education, and and gender. Now experience uh, is the year of experience of, of uh, that employee um, and then education is the number of years of education the employee uh, has and then gender uh, means one means it's uh, male and zero means it's female so that's the and in, in technically we call this as a dummy variable so we have used a dummy to represent one as male and zero as as female. All right. So uh, this is in front of us, and you know, let's see how we can do a regression model um, in Excel. So for that, you need to have this data analysis tool pack, as you can see uh, um, at at the cursor. If you don't have it already, uh, simply go to File, uh, go to uh, Options, and then go to add in and then uh, go and then you know use this analysis tool pack okay it is already checked because I've already uh, uh, you know checked it if it is not then you simply check it and you know press ok and it's it's going to uh, come on the front uh, front page so so the data analysis is uh, already there so when you click on this uh, there are several analysis tools available to you. Uh, we should go to regression. So we'll go to regression. Uh, press OK. Now it asks for so many inputs. Okay. First thing is your input Y range. Uh, y is nothing but the dependent variable or the Y variable in a regression. Um, so the Y variable in this case is salary, right? So we want to know how salary is depending on uh, somebody's experience, education, and gender. So we'll select uh, the uh, uh, you know data series from uh, in the from the B column, and then you know we'll select the X series. So X will have three independent variable: experience, education, and gender. So we select um, this data. Okay. All right. So we have the input Y range and input X range. Now there are several other things we need to, uh, you know, provide also. Uh, we'll use the confidence level, which is by default is 95% confidence level um, for you know finding out the p-values and and so on. Um, you know, we'll keep it like that. We don't want to change it. We want the output, so we'll you know keep a output range where we'll get the output. Output means you know. The model will be used to predict the salary so we'll have the predicted value of salary for the same data using the model and we'll have the actual value and then we'll we'll do a comparison we want this on the same excel sheet so we don't want new excel sheet if you want new worksheet where the output will be you can check in the new worksheet as well uh, i also want the residual plot uh, the standardized residuals uh, and i also want the line plot if you want residual plot uh, and so on you can you can also have I don't want normal probability plot uh, but you can also you know ask for normal probability plot as well so when we press ok we'll have the uh, regression output in front of us as you can see on the screen so in the regression output uh, we'll have the summary of regression statistics uh, the multiple uh, regression uh, multiple R the R squared adjusted R square standard error and uh, and the ANOVA statistics uh, and finally the uh, coefficients uh, as well. Um, so the reason why we are calling this as multiple regression is because we have you know more than one independent variable. 
right so uh, the r square value in this case is 76 percent which which shows that 76 percent of the variation in the dependent variable which is salary is being explained correctly by the three independent variables uh, we'll also have the uh, Adjusted R square, so that's important in multiple regression. So adjusted R square will be, you know, a little less than the R square, uh, and that's important because when you use more number of independent variables, uh, your adjusted R square will go down, you know, because it penalizes you for using more number of uh, variables. So because the idea is that to build a good model with lesser number of variables, so you know that that's uh, a trade-off. If you use more variables, your R square will go up. But adjust, at adjusted R square will go up, but not at that uh, pace or not at that uh, you know speed. So ANOVA in the ANOVA, make sure that uh, your uh, p value uh, for significance should be less than 0 0.05. So that's a must thing to see. If that's not there, then we need not have to see the other results. So that's there, so which is a good thing. Uh, and then we'll directly go to the coefficients and we'll see which are the significant variables and which are not. So we have got three independent variables x1, x2 and x3 which are which we simply represent x1 means experience, x2 means education and x3 is gender. Right? So we have got two continuous variables experience and education and one a categorical variable or dummy variable. All right. So we've got the intercept as minus 3043. Uh, and then the intercept, uh, the slope coefficient or the beta parameter for education is 461.59, and then for uh, uh, for sorry, it's for experience, and then for education it's 323.17, and for gender it's minus 116.18. Now, whether these values are significant, we just need to check the p-values. Now, if you see. The p-values is, you know, has to be close to 0 0.05 or less than that. So uh, the last values, p-value, which is against gender is 0.82. So it shows that uh, gender doesn't pay, play any role in the salary determination. That means irrespective of gender, the salary is distributed uniformly. So salary uh, it doesn't depend on gender of the employee. Okay. So that's what. So, um, so the regression equation will finally be, uh, you know, formulated using uh, only two variables, uh, x1 and x2. That means experience and education are significant variables, which really, you know, defines or predicts somebody's uh, salary. Right. So that's what uh, your significance test will tell you. Um, now, using this regression equations, uh, as you know, regression equation is nothing but a simple. Uh, you know equations so we have salary equal to uh, minus 3043 uh, and then plus 461 461 into experience and then plus 321, 321 into uh, education, years of education. So that's the final regression equation. I've got two variables and then that's how salary is determined. So multiple regression equation is nothing but a simple linear equation that you find and you're only able to formulate that after having the coefficients in place. Right? That's why you know the coefficients are so important. And we're not including gender here because gender is not a significant variable because the p-value is not less than uh, point less than point zero five. And then we have the residuals uh, and predicted values in in down below. Uh, the idea of having residuals is that the sum of the residuals should always be zero. That's an assumption in multiple uh, linear regression or any form of linear regressions. So what you do is that simply, you know, take a summation of that, uh, and as I can see, the sum of the residuals is very close to zero. It's almost zero actually, and that's in basic assumption. So ensure that the residuals should be uh, sum should be zero, okay? And the residuals should not be correlated, and that there should not be pattern in the residuals. So we'll check the residual plot to, to confirm that. 
We also have the predicted values of Y. So predicted value of salary that also we have. So this is the predicted value of salary. Now you can actually compare the predicted value of salary with the actual value of salary. Like in the first case, the salary is 3000, but the model predicts that the salary is 3800. So that means there is an error of 857. Uh, in the second case, the actual salary is you know 2000, but the predicted salary is 1757. So there is a you know error of 242, and so on. So that's the way you can actually compare the predicted value of uh, your uh, dependent variable, which is salary, and the actual value. Sometimes it gives an idea that how well your model is actually able to predict uh, the uh, values. Sometimes it's not going to do uh, a, a good job because you know the values. Uh, are so uh, you know um, I mean the error uh, or the residual is so large that it uh, the model doesn't do really well in that cases but in some cases it's it's it does a good job so the final thing that we'll do is to look at the different plots so what are the different plots that which you know you which are important okay uh, I have asked for the line plot you can also ask for the residual plot okay so we didn't ask for residual plot but when you actually ask for residual plot uh, you know data analysis uh, pack so it, it's going to give the, uh, the distribution of residuals and ensure that it the residual values are completely random there is no pattern so visually you can actually look at it look at it in the line plot you will see how the relations between different variables okay so y and x1 that means salary and you know your uh, experience level you can see that as experience level goes up salary also goes up you know just by looking at the graph similarly as education goes off your salaries goes up you know that's also uh, is seen in the graph here you can see a straight line or upward sloping graph uh, direction and the last one is um, the uh, salary related to gender okay so with respect to zero which is female and then with respect to male now you can see that there is a difference actually the average salary of you know female population and the male population is slightly different like in, in the male population it is slightly higher than the female population but it statistically it's not significant because uh, and we have proved that uh, using the p-values so statistically it's not the salary difference is not significant and that's why we are saying that the uh, salary uh, is is not varying with respect to vendors so that's how we can do multiple regression in excel so for more videos subscribe to our channel and uh, visit our website uh, in the description section